So today, we will continue with the projections of lines. So if we just recollect, in the previous classes, or I can just say in the past two classes, we have just started with the projections of lines. And in the initial class, I have just considered the different cases where a particular line can be described with reference to HP and VP. And we have seen four different cases. We have seen a line may be parallel to one plane or it may be parallel to both the planes. Then we have seen line may be contained in one plane or it may contain in both the planes. Then we have seen a line may be perpendicular to one plane and parallel to other plane. Then we also seen a line inclined to one plane and parallel to other. So those are the important concepts wherein it will be useful for me today because anyway today I wanted to start with a line inclined to both the planes. Now generally whenever I want to do this particular case, it is mandatory that you should know the cases whatever we have dealt in the previous sessions. If you have followed that properly, I think this particular case will become a cakewalk for you. It becomes very easy for you. Okay. Now since, as you can see, I have given a line inclined to both the planes. That means that I have given that a line is inclined to both HP as well as PP. In the previous class, what we have done is, a line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP. And also we have done a line inclined to VP and parallel to HP. That is, we have done two different cases separately. Now, as you can see, if I just combine both of them, I am going to get this line inclined to both the planes. And also we have seen, when a line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP. So we have seen that, since the line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP, and since the line is parallel to VP, the true length of the line will be seen in front view with two inclination theta. And since the line was inclined to HP, its corresponding top view will be four short and length. And we consider that particular length to be length of the top view. And that particular length of the top view was parallel to x, y line. Similarly, in the second case, what we have seen is, when the line is inclined to VP and parallel to HP, now, since the line was parallel to HP, its true length will be seen in top view. Not only that, it is inclined to the VP at the true angle phi. Okay. Not only that, since the line was inclined to VP, in the front view, it will be four short and length. We consider that to be length of the front view LFV, which was parallel to x y. So, we can say that when a line is inclined to a particular plane, its corresponding length has to be four short end. And the four short end length can be considered as LTV or LFV or I can say apparent lengths. Okay, now anyway, I just wanted to illustrate this. Then, I am just going to do the problem on the board without considering any 3D figure. Not at all, but I am just going to illustrate to you how exactly we can comprehend when the line is inclined to one plane and also when the line is inclined to other plane also. Okay. Now let us say in the last class we have just seen this. That is the line is inclined to or let me consider in this way. The line is inclined to HP but it is parallel to VP. How do you got the projections there? You would have seen that since the line is parallel to VP, we would have simply written like this. That is, I would have got the line which I can see the true length in the front view, which was inclined at the true inclination. Okay. Now, in the top view, as you can see, in the top view, since the line is inclined to HP, it should be seen as a four shot. And that you can see here, but anyway, this particular length is nothing but the projection or I can say horizontal projection of this or I can say it is nothing but I can say LTV. Okay, now this is what I have explained in the previous class. Now, let us say that I am going to rotate the line in this way. You can just see what I am doing. See, let us say if the line, if I keep it in this position, we can make out that now the line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP. Now, let us say I am going to just turn in this way. Now, what is happening? Since I am turning in this way, the line is getting inclined to VP also. But you can observe one more thing. So what is that observation? That is, the inclination of the reference to HP is not changing. Because anyway, already the line is inclined to HP to certain angle theta. 
Now the theta remains constant, but still I can make this line inclined to VP. Now if I keep it in this particular position, since the line is inclined to theta or HP, that particular inclination is not changing. What about it is the length of the top view? Length of the top view will not. Why the length of the top view will not? Because anyway, its projected distance will be nothing but uh, this particular length into cross component. So that will not change. Even if the line is inclined to VP, when it is inclined to HP, its length in the top view will not change. So that I can make the conclusion. Another conclusion is, since I told you that, let us adjust the critic on my palm like this. Okay. Now, I can see that this is the line and this is the projected length and as you can see the projected length, length of the top view is on x1 and itself. Now, if I just rotate in this way, now what will happen? Now, the line is getting inclined to VP also, but even if the line is inclined to VP, if I just see in the front view, so in the front view, what about its ends? Because anyway, this particular end is on HP itself and this particular other end, that is this is ND and ND B. So, ND is at a certain that is this is that the particular distance that even if I rotate in this particular way, where it got inclined to VP, it ends, that is, this particular distance will not change. That is, in the front view, the path of the ends, that is, path of the ends A and B remains constant. So, we consider that path as locus. Okay. So, now I can conclude that when a line is inclined to HP, even if the line is inclined to VP, its length of the top view will not change. Not only that, in the front view, the locus, that is the particular other end, which is at a distance above HP, will also not change. That would say that that locus also is fixed. Okay, so that's what you have seen. Similarly, now let us say, I will consider it in this way now. Yeah, now let us say, I will consider the line in this way. So, what do you find the line is in this way? Now the line is, now the line is parallel to HP, but it is inclined to VP. Okay, now since the line is parallel to HP and inclined to VP, in the top view, we can see the true line. Now, similarly now what I can do, I can simply rotate in this way. Because earlier as you can see here, the line is parallel to HP, but it is inclined to VP. But the inclination will be remain constant. But even if the line is inclined to VP, its projected, what the projected line? This is the projected line. Its projected line will not change. Not only that, the locus of this particular end will also will not change. Is it okay? So I can conclude that when a line is inclined to both HP as well as VP, then what will happen? If the line is inclined to both HP as well as VP, I can conclude that its corresponding top view and front view has to be foreshortened. How much it is foreshortened? That foreshortened length can be considered as LTV and LFV. Not only that, the locus of the ends also will not change. So if we just remember this, we can do problem wherein the line is inclined to both the place. Now I am going to illustrate this particular problem on the orthographic projection. Okay. Okay, anyway, as an illustration of this particular problem, as I told you that this particular line, let us say the true length of the line is, let us say some 80 mm, and this particular line is, let us say, inclined at 30 degrees to HP, and let us say it is inclined at 45 degrees to VP. And also, I told you that whenever we wanted to start from any view, either from top view or front view, I need to know the position of one of the ends, so that I can start the problem. Let us say I have given the NDA. Let us say NDA is 25 mm. Let us say in front of VP and let us say 30 mm above H. So this is a problem. Now I need to draw the projections. Now as I told you, this particular problem can be done such that first I will consider line is inclined to HP, then I will write the projection. I can consider that to be stage 1. In stage 2, I will consider now 
the line is inclined to VP and parallel to HP. I get the second stage. Then I am going to combine both the stages. Okay. Now let us consider that now the line is inclined to HP. Now since the line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP, since the line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP, the line is where do you see the true length? Since the line is parallel to VP, I can set the true length in the front view. So I need to start from front view. Okay, let us start from front view. So if you want to start from the front view, I need to start with uh, the NDA because anyway I have just given the details of NDA. So NDA is 20, 30 mm above HP. So that I can mark. So let us consider this to be 30 mm. So we will call it as A dash. So this distance will be 30 mm. What else? And also I know the true length of the line. So and also I know the true length of the line is 80 mm. And also it is inclined to theta 30 degrees so that I can also show that particular distance. So what I do now is I will just draw a line which is inclined at 30 degrees. And of course this is DL and this angle is what angle? True angle. Remember. True angle and true length always should go together. Then I will take this true length to be 80 mm. Now I will consider this as V1 dash. Why V1 dash I will consider? Remember, always I wanted to keep A dash V dash. AB has my final projection because I know this is not the final projection, it's only the true length line. So I bought the true length line. So then I can draw this. So this particular line can be considered as the locus of B in the front view. Okay. Now I need to draw the corresponding top view. So what about the corresponding top view? The top view I know that the NDA is 25 in front of VP. So I am just going to mark that point also here. I will take this to be 25. 25 mm. So this is A now. Then now since the line is inclined to one plane and parallel to other, here I get this true length. In the other view, I see the foreshortened length which can be considered now to be LTV and that should be parallel to XY line. Okay, then what I do then? I will draw the projector because anyway we know that B and B dash should be on the same projector. A, A dash, same projector. Then I am going to get this distance. So let me get this. So that this angle is B1 dash. Now what is this then? B1. So what is this length actually now? It is nothing but length of the top view. Stage 1. See stage 1 is whatever we have done in the previous session. Same thing. Only thing is now I am going to do it both the uh, inclinations. Then I am going to club it. It is as simple as that. Okay, anyway stage 1 is over. Now what about stage 2? So let me extend this XYZ now. So what about stage 2? In the stage 2, now I will consider line is inclined to VP and parallel to HP. Now since the line is inclined to VP and parallel to HP, where do you see the true length? I see the true length in the top view. I need to start from top view. And anyway, if I want to draw the top view, I should know one of the ends. Anyway, one end is given. That is the NDI is 25 mm in front of VP. So that I will consider the same locus. So let me extend this line line. Okay, now let me consider this as A. Now, I know the true length and also I know inclination of the line with reference to VP which is given as 45 degrees. Now what I do is here, I will just draw a line equal to 80 mm and inclined at 45 degrees to VP. So let me do that. Okay, let me suppose it comes here. So now it is A and again I told you that this is the TL line. This is TL and what about this angle? This angle with reference to VP. That is fine. So that now I need to call this. Always remember whenever you do any problem, you have to name all the end points or the uh, critical points always. Okay, anyway already I have taken consider as B1 dash here. Now let us say this is B2. So I will consider this to be B2 minus. Okay, now what about the corresponding front view? Now we know that. Now the line is inclined to 
VP and parallel to HP. Since it is parallel to HP and inclined to VP, we can see the four shot at length in the front view. So where do you get that? But anyway, I know one of the ends. One of the ends has to be 30 above HP. So that I am just going to take the same line here. I am just going to extend this. Okay, now I will just draw a projector through this so that this will be a dash. Similarly, I will just draw a projector through this so that this will be. Now this is veto. If this is veto, this should be what then? Veto dash. Now this line will be four short and length in the front view, which is considered as LFV. Okay, so what are the things we are able to found from these two stages in stage 1? We are able to find this LTV. Not only that, we are able to find the locus of the ends AB in the front view. Similarly, what is that we have done in the second stage? In the second stage, we are able to determine the length of the front view. Not only that, we are able to determine the locus of the ends A and B in the top view. Remember, if you want to do any problem in lines, these six parameters should be known to me or I need to determine that so that a line will become inclined to both the planes. Now anyway, I have these two stages. Now I need to combine these two stages. Okay, so combine the stages, I know that locus thing I know. So what I do now is, I am just going to extend this. So this is nothing but I can consider this to be locus of what? Locus of NDP in the top front view. So it is locus of B dash. Similarly, if I extend this, I can consider this to be locus of A dash. Now anyway, this is my XY line. Now if I extend this, this is locus of A. And if I extend this, this is locus of B. Okay, anyway, I told you that if I want to get the solution for the problem varying line inclined to both the planes, I started by saying that I need to consider line inclined to one plane, parallel to other. That is the reason here what I did is I had done stage 1 and stage 2. In stage 1, line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP. In stage 2, the line was inclined to VP and parallel to HP. Now I need to combine both the stages. If I combine both the stages, I am going to get the solution for the problem wherein the line is inclined to both the planes. Now anyway, I know the locus points. Anyway, I know length of the front view should be LFV. Then what you do then? Anyway, I know the locus points here. So since I know the locus point, I will randomly consider at some point. Let us say I will consider this to be A dash. Then I will drive projector through this. I am going to get this to be A. Now, what all you need to do is, since the length of the front view should be this, why it should be only this? Because the line is inclined to be P by a certain distance, second angle in the angle, whatever it is. So it has to be this only now. So now what you should do is, take this LFV distance with A as center, draw an arc. Okay, so if I draw an arc, and if I join in this, then this will be, your LFV. So you can see this, this distance should be same as this distance. So that what is this uh, final point then? This final point should be your B dash. Okay. Now, I know B dash location now. Now already we know that B dash and B should be on the same projector. Anyway, your locus of B is here. Then what I should do then? I need to draw the Project because always you know that the projector from a particular point should be on the same projector. Anyway, V dash should be here. So if I draw the projector through this, then this should be V. And if I join this, then this will be my final top. Now I need to see whether whatever I done is correct or not. So what is that? Uh, how do you check it? Whether this particular length is equal to LTV because anybody know that this length has to be equal to what? LTV. So where do you have LTV? You have LTV the first figure. So if you have done the problem right, this length should be same as this length. Is it clear? Now, this is the final projection. But one more thing I observe. So now as you can see, 
This particular final projection is also inclined to both HP, VP to a certain angle. Let us say if you want to do this angle. That is the final projection A dash, B dash which is making with reference to HP. Okay, now tell me whether this angle is same as theta. You can just see mathematically see, see this local slice it cannot be changed because once I say that rotate, if I rotate the line always the ends remains at the same distance from HP it will not change since that will not change and already we know that the true length line has to be more than the apparent length because anyway told you that this A dash B dash is the final project nothing but there are the apparent lengths this is because it is LFV this is NTV now since that is the case now TL is always greater than apparent length since your TL is always less than the apparent length. What about the apparent length? Apparent length has to be greater than the true angles. Now since they are greater than true angles, I need to give by certain notation. So here I will give this notation as alpha. So now I can conclude alpha should be greater than theta. Similarly, here also we can see that. So here if I measure this angle, this angle with reference to VP has to be greater than the true angle phi and we call that as beta so beta is greater than phi here we told you that theta and phi are the true angles and alpha and beta so what do you call these angles now here we told you these are all apparent lengths then what do you call these angles so don't say it is untrue angles so we need to say that as apparent so we will say alpha beta apparent angles and theta and phi two angles so I can conclude that finally your apparent angles are greater than the true angles not only that I can now conclude that after determining this length of the top length of the front view in these two stages in the final stage what it need to do is already we know this locus or we know the ends at which we are going to get in both front view and top view. Now I need to arrange. What I need to arrange? I need to arrange this LFV LTV such that they should be in projection with each other. That means A dash A should be on the same projector, B dash and B should be on the same projector. Understood? Now as you can see, I have done this problem in three stages. It is only for the understanding purpose. So no need for you always to do in three stages. I can just do this everything in a single stage. That I am going to illustrate now. Okay, anyway, I told you that. As an illustration, I have just done in three stages. But if you have understood this problem, no need for you to do in three stages. I can everything I can do in a single stage itself. That's I am going to illustrate. So as usual, I will draw x y line. Now I need to do the solution for this particular problem. That is line 80 mm long line is inclined to HP by 30 degrees and inclined to VP by 45 degrees and along the ends A is 25 mm in front of VP, 30 mm above HP. Draw the projections. This is the simplest problem you can get whenever you have a line inclined to both the planes. Now as usual now I will consider, mentally I will consider that first line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP. Now since the line is inclined to HP and parallel to VP, I need to start from Front view. Start from front view. So the front view is, I know the distance above HP is above HP by distance equal to 30. So I am just marking this 30 mm. Okay. Now I know the true length line. So true length is equal to 80 mm and inclined at 30 degrees to HP. So that also I can mark. So I will call this as V1 dash TL angle theta ok now I need to draw the corresponding top view corresponding top view is the line now when the end A is 25 in front of VP so I will take this as 25 so this is A now 
Okay. Now, since the line is inclined to one plane and parallel to other plane, now I am going to get in the top view, the length of the top view, and that length of the top view should be parallel to x y line as usual. So, I will get this. So, this will be length of the top view. This is b1 dash. This should be b1. And also told you that in stage 1, we are able to determine this LTV. Not only that, the ends. So, I am just going to draw lines here. So, passing through this. So, if you just draw a line passing through this. What is this? This is nothing but locus of B dash. Similarly, I can also indicate this is how I can indicate. So, this is nothing but locus of A dash. So, I can conclude that by doing stage 1, I am able to determine LTV and also the locus of B dash. Oh, well, now I will do the second stage the same figure. Okay, what is the second stage I am telling you? Second stage, now I will consider line is inclined to VP and parallel to HP. Now since the line is parallel to HP, I can see true length in the top view. So draw the top view. Anyway, already we know the NDA here. Okay, now I will draw the line which is equal to 80 mm and inclination equal to how much now? 45 degrees. Let us say something along it here. This is the length. Okay, I think I have taken an approximately the same distance. So that uh, this is TL and this angle is 5 and uh, this end is now I say B2. Always remember you need to name the points properly. If you name the points properly and also if you follow the sequential procedure, you will not get any confusion in between. Okay. Okay, anyway, once I do this, I can also now draw a line through this. So, what is this now? This is nothing but locus of B. And of course, this is locus of K. Anyway, now this is TL. That would say that in the second stage, the line is inclined to VP, but it is parallel to HP. Since it is parallel to HP, in the front view, it should be a line parallel to XY line, but of course it should be foreshortened because it is inclined to VP. So, we just draw the projector through this. So that this is V2. So that this becomes what then? V2 dash. And uh, if I direct this, what is this length now? Length of the front view. Now we can see in stage 2, we are able to determine length of the front view and also the locus of B in the top view. Now as I told you, if I want to get the final state, I should know minimum 6. What are the 6 parameters I know now? I know the locus in both, that is the locus of ends AB both in top view as well as in the front view and also I know LTV and LFV. So what are the final state I said? In the final stage, I need to arrange LFV and LTV with respect to their paths, that is both the top and front view such that they should be in projection with each other. Okay, now what I should do now? Now finally you can see, I know this A dash, this is B2 dash. Now LFV, but since the line is inclined to both the planes, no longer the line will be parallel to x1 in any of the views because as you can see in the initial stages you would have seen that since the line was inclined to one plane and parallel to other in one of the views the line seems to be parallel to x1 line of course would have been foreshortened but once the line is inclined to both the planes it no longer remains parallel to x1 line in any of the views is it okay so now finally i can say with a dash as center with a dash, B2 dash radius, draw an arc. So where do you put this arc? Because anyway this is B2 dash. So B2 dash has to be in line with this locus of B dash. That is the end B in the front view. So you just draw an arc. Draw an arc. And remember to show this direction. Always you should show the direction. I am going to rotate like this. Okay. So that this will be what then? This should be your final B dash. Because anyway, this is my final projection now. So, no need for any subscript here. Okay. Always remember, I am going to give these subscripts only for the true length lines. 
once it becomes you are the final product so i can put for it the a dash it finish okay now i will draw in this this is my final front view now we anyway know that a a dash i mean a dash a same projector similarly b dash b same projector so what i do there i will try projector through this so that this will be my final point b in the top view i am going to join this okay now if i have done the problem right so what do i expect now i expect that this length has to be equal to length of the top view that means if we have shown this arc again to the direction this arc should be in line with this particular point b the other way is first get this lfv get this ltv putting on this b you see out on the problem right what do you expect i expect that b dash b should be on the same projector because since you are going to do it on your drawing sheet generally you will have some one or two mm that they are this way but strictly speaking it has to be on the same projector that is the reason what you can do is first draw this projector then adjust the arc so that i am going to get the solution proper is it clear i think now you understood so as you can see no need for this three stages i can do it in a single stage so as you can observe if we simply see this figure you will get confused because so many lines are there now so that is the reason whenever you do any problem in projection supply you have to follow the procedure and the procedure has to be in a sequential manner and that sequential manner lead to your solution when the solution is what i said we need to finally found this ltv lf i need to find the locus if i know this six parameter i can do any problem so what i can conclude is in any problem in lines i would have given the data in different different varieties even if it is different varieties finally i am arriving at this one is it okay thank you